Where are things at right now with the former great Seahawks defensive players and Russell Wilson? Because I saw that you guys uh, had that event for Coach Carroll when he basically got fired as the head coach of the team, even though they're moving his position however they want to word it. And it seemed like getting everyone in the same room has created a little <laughs> momentum of restoring this friendship. Is that fair to say? Let's let's just say time heals all wounds. Let, let's just say that. It was so unfortunate during our time in Seattle that we compared who's the best is it the defense is doing it is it Marshawn is it Russell Wilson like who who gets the credit and I truly believe that just got in our way of having the dynasty that we had a lot of egos all those alpha personalities but you saw when Russell Wilson spoke on Brandon Marshall's podcast he saw Sherm Sherm smiled at him they was out there talking hugging and kissing and so um it's really cool to see as as we progress throughout our careers as we progress into adulthood Let's just let bygones be bygones. We did some great stuff in Seattle, and um, it's definitely going to be legendary and unforgettable. And so um, I like where we're at. The decision to not hand the football to Marshawn Lynch is what ruined you guys as a team, and we've been through this before. You could never fracture what happened mm -hmm. after that. But do you at all ever regret like how you, if you didn't let ego get in the way, you guys were such a special team and such a good team, what it could have continued to have been? I'm telling you, we, we, we should have three Super Bowls. We should have three to four Super Bowls. If you just make the right decision, you just hand the ball off. And when you didn't do that, a lot of fingers got pointed. It's your fault. It's your fault. You should have did this. You should have did that. And when I, when I said last time, we had like a dark gray cloud hovering over us for about five to six years. And it didn't quite leave until guys started leaving the building. And so um, hard, hard lesson to learn. If anybody's ever in that position again in their careers, if they're coaching or being a GM, Make sure you run the dang football and life will be good. KJ Wright here with us. Uh, what was your impressions? I know you wanted DQ, Dan Quinn, to be the next head coach. That's not the way that it did go down with him. Winded up with the commanders. What about uh, Mike McDonald with the Seahawks? Your initial reaction was what? That's another good option. No, really, no, that's a great option that the Seattle Seahawks did. You got a guy that's young, a guy that's really creating a new trend with, with this dominating multiple defense that he has. And I had a chance to meet him last week. I stopped by the VMAC last week, got a chance to meet him, and I like his energy. I like his swag. I like his energy. I love this culture that he's trying to build. Obviously, what Pete Carroll did for 14 years, that's going to be obviously hard to match. So he wants to build on top of what Coach Carroll has already done. Keep everything vibrant. Keep everything fun. But bring in your own style. Bring in your own personality. And I'm telling you, Zach, he has this, this serious demeanor to him, which, which the Seattle Seahawks need. They need that guy that's going to be disciplined. That guy's going to be straight, straight to the point. That guy's going to hold hold people accountable. And so I'm really excited to see what he brings to the table. He's built a phenomenal staff on defense, on offense. And so I believe the sky's the limit because when we hit face the Niners twice a year, when we got the Rams twice a year, they've been kicking our tails for the past three, four years. Let's really switch stuff up, get a defensive-minded guy in there. They can really slow those offenses down. Talking to KJ Wright right now on the Zach Gelb Show on CBS Sports Radio. The future of Russell Wilson. Uh, we all know eventually he'll never really get released by the Denver Broncos and he could sign on somewhere cheap. What do you think the best option is for a landing spot for Russ for this upcoming season? He has got to sign with the Pittsburgh Steelers. You have got to go to the Pittsburgh Steelers. It is bizarre to me, Zach, what Mike Tomlin has done with, to be respectful, you know, tier three, tier four quarterbacks. Right. It's been phenomenal that you get 10 wins with those quarterbacks, nine wins, get you someone that's been to multiple Pro Bowls, been to Super Bowls, has an all pro under his belt and really get this thing going over there in Pittsburgh. This team is perfectly built for him. Najee Harris, you got the running game. You got Jalen Warren, Pickens, dominating defense. Get you a quarterback that can find a way to get you guys over the hump. And so it's unfortunate that his time in, in Denver went like that two years in a row just just it was a decline it was a really steep decline that we saw with Russell and, and with all Sean Payton and Nathaniel Hackett so get back on track it obviously be a contract friendly type of deal and life will be good for Russell Wilson I'm really excited to see where he ends up yeah what do you think he could continue to be though as a quarterback because the last two years I know he played fine this year but I just mm -hmm. don't know if he could be a great quarterback again like is the ceiling for Russ moving forward just potentially being a good quarterback again in the NFL let, Russell, can, Russell can give you 10-plus wins. I'll say that. Russell Wilson can give you 10-plus wins. Russell Wilson can get you in the playoffs. With a Joe Burrow, 
going to be tough. With a Lamar Jackson winning the division, like, it's obviously going to be tough. But he can get you in a position to compete. He can have you in a position to be um, in the playoffs. He can give teams a run for the money when it comes to winning the division. And so I love what he brings to the table. You saw Zach when he started using his legs, when he started running. Do that. Get outside the pocket. Bomb that football downfield. And his offensive coordinator has got to find a way to maximize his skill set. Maximize Russell Wilson talent at age 35, I believe. And so I know he can still play some big time ball. You see that he has this chip on his shoulder. He has a little bit of adversity. And that's good for all ball players. When you get benched, when you get cut, it, it, it really channels that inner dog in you to like, I want to get back on track. I want to prove to the whole world who I can be. And so I think this is good for Russell. This next destination, I think, is going to make a lot of noise. Yeah, I also think Russ needs to focus more just getting back to football. I think Russ got into the whole brand and, okay, you're an icon and all the -the (laughs) off-the-field stuff. I just, I truly don't believe, I said this before you came on, KJ Wright, I don't think playing at his best was number one on the priority list the last few years. I think that's fair to say. That's that's fair to say. You see the endorsements. You see, um, obviously, Mary Sierra, who who was a superstar in her own, in her own right. And so get back to the basics, eliminate the distractions, put the colognes away, uh, put, put all the <laughs> stuff away. What's, what's the brand? The good man brand. I love all this stuff. He, Russell Wilson is a businessman. I'm telling you, dial in to the details, focus up, narrow in. I believe this moment, telling, when teams tell you you're not good enough, when teams tell you we're going to sit you on the bench, that stings, that hurts. And that's why I, I know he's going to be laser focused, dial into the details. I'm telling you, Zach, if anybody can bounce back, Russell Wilson's a guy that can do that. Talking to KJ Wright, make sure you check out the KJ Wright Show in Seattle's ESPN, 7, 10 a.m. Also, make sure you check out KJ all day with his podcast. How do you think Russ could be, though, in the locker room? Because it did feel like in year one he had a tough time relating to the locker room and he isolated himself for Mm -hmm. the locker room. And even though it felt like the relationships with the players were proved in Denver this past year, uh, it wasn't necessarily the case with him and Sean Payton being able to get on the same page. Listen, listen to me closely. I'm seeing a new Russ. We're seeing a new Russ right before our eyes. That he's letting his hair down. He's speaking up. He's <laughs> defending himself. You saw what he said about Marshawn Lynch when he defended himself with uh, on Brandon Marshall's show? He's like, I don't know what that guy's talking about. He probably had a little too much Hennessy. Perfect. That's genius. Like, go. Pre- go defend yourself. Talk your stuff. Talk your mess. That is what I love to see from Russell. And so you're talking about being authentic, being true to himself. Saying how you truly feel versus saying what you think sounds right, that's what your guys want. That's what your teammates want to hear. They some they want someone they can connect with, someone they can relate with. And I believe that I'm seeing in the last ever since he's gotten bench, ever since he started speaking up for himself, we're really seeing a new Russell Wilson. So I can't wait to see him migrate into a new locker room because they're gonna love him. I also wonder why Sean took the job. I know he got paid a fortune. Uh, Sean Payton, that is. But why would you leave the Saints when you didn't have a quarterback at the end, and that's why you retired, and then you take a job where you didn't love the quarterback at first? Like, how they went about this and how early they tried to change the contract, it just showed that Sean never really wanted to try to make this work or salvage this uh, with uh, Russell Wilson. No, horrendous leadership. Horrendous leadership from the owner, from the GM, um, from the head coach. It was just bad. It's just a bad dynamic since day one. You knew what you were getting. You saw him the year before. Well, you saw the contract that he had, right? You saw all of these things. And before you took the job, you should have been like, no, this is not the right situation or the scenario for me. But instead, you chose to go in your press conference and tell your, your starting quarterback, stop kissing babies. Yeah. Stop worrying about your image. You, you come to a player in the middle of the season, that in the middle of the season saying, adjust your contract or I'm benching you. You handle business – before the season start and you handle business after the season you don't handle that kind of business right in the middle of the season when you're trying to focus on your opponents and so just horrendous leadership from the top all the way down and so best of luck to sean payne going forward with whoever he chooses to be a starting quarterback and and you know this if a team offers you money even if you don't like necessarily the culture they're willing to pay you something you're going to go sign there if it's the most guaranteed money i wonder how many guys though are going to get kind of turned off by Denver, just seeing what happened to Russ this past year? We talk as players. If I'm about to go to a team, I'm making a phone call. Hey, bro, how was your experience with the Las Vegas Raiders? Hey, bro, how was your experience with the Commanders? We talk all the time. How's this coach? How's that coach? 
And so it is a real brotherhood. It is a real fraternity. If it comes down to $10 million here, $8 million there, it, for my happiness, I'll take a little bit less to be in the right situation. I promise you, I'll take a little bit less to be in the right situation, the right scenario, because you don't want to play for some guy that you don't feel cares about your well-being, someone that talks to you any kind of way. I promise you, guys, we want to make the right decisions for our happiness first. Let's just say Russ and the Steelers can't find a way to get something done. Uh, what else? Who else jumps out to you? Is it the Raiders? Is it Atlanta? Is it maybe Minnesota if they move on from Kirk Cousins? Who's the next team if it's not Pittsburgh? Well, Atlanta Falcons clearly need a quarterback. I personally think that's Justin Fields' destination. Justin Fields and the Atlanta Falcons makes all the sense in the world. They need a quarterback. Um, who, who, I can't even think of their quarterback now. Who's Atlanta Falcons starting for? Desmond Ritter or, or was that Taylor Ham Heineke as well? Both of those exactly. guys ain't it. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. And so Justin Fields or Russell Wilson, go to the Atlanta Falcons. That is my next destination. Bijan Robinson is going to be a superstar in this league. He's going to be a superstar. Kyle Pitts, we haven't figured him out. He has all the physical traits. He just needs a quarterback to bring him alive. And obviously, Drake Lund is going to be a stud as well. So this offense is ready. This offense is prepared to really make some noise and take over that division. Get them a real quarterback in the building. The sky's the limit for those guys. Now, I would have said maybe there was a chance of this happening if Pete was still the coach. But we are past right now the potential reunion <laughs> of Russ going back to Seattle, correct? No, the owner's still there. The GM's still there. Equipment manager, no. no it's not happening in Seattle. No, that, that ship has long sailed. Yeah, that's he's going to be in the ring of honor, but he, he won't play there. So let me use your defensive mind here for a second. <laughs> we're, we're all trying to figure out how to slow down the Chiefs. You you played on a great defense. That LOB, let's say, was going up against Mahomes. How would you guys approach him? First, we would have started inside out. We would have worked. We would have started inside out. And when I say inside, we would have focused all on number 87. Defensive lineman, when he's, at, when he's right there at number three, you chip him, you hit him, you get him off his track. When we go man to man, KJ, you play outside. Cam Chancellor, you play inside and over the top. You cannot let him take over a game. You cannot let those guys just pitch and catch and have a field day. And so we would have started there. But with our pass rush, Zach, with our pass rush, guys, cage rush Patrick Mahomes. Cage rush him. By that, I mean don't let him step up in those B gaps, but let him step up in those A gaps like we saw in the Super Bowl to where he was able to win the ball game. And so you got to be disciplined with this guy because when he takes off running, he could run, throw it, or he can just simply run it and pick up the first down. And so it starts right there in the middle. It starts up front, staying disciplined with these guys. Hey, Valdez Scantley, okay, whatever. Mikael Hartman, whatever. Sherman, Maxwell, you handle those guys. Right here in the in the heart of this defense is how you got to slow those guys down to give yourself a chance. And, and, and you guys know it too. The offense has to help them out too because San Francisco in that first half, they should have been up by a whole lot more. And when yeah. you leave someone like Mahomes or Brady in a game and they're in striking distance, I don't care how great your defense is, eventually yeah. they're going to find a way uh, to get that game tied up. And then that comes back to the whole conversation, game manager or game changer. And you need, you need a quarterback to manage the game. You need a quarterback to do the little things right, to pick up this first down here or there. But when it's nut cutting time, when it's time to hoist the Lombardi trophy, I need a game changer on this fourth and one. I need to put the ball in your hands and you're going to find a way to execute and, and lead us to the promised land. And so when Cam Newton was saying all of that stuff, I was like, bro, you need to have game manager type of personality. You need a game manager type of sure. traits. But obviously, but obviously when, it, when it's really time to get it done, to really execute, you need that game changer uh, person on your football team. And, and you know what's crazy? You look back at that Super Bowl. I don't think Brock Purdy played great. But he wasn't horrible. Like, he gave a good performance. It was amazing how many of the playmakers didn't show up. I know Debo was dealing with something. Kittle oh, yeah. basically did nothing. Ayuk, they didn't target him enough. And as great as McCaffrey is, I love McCaffrey. He fumbled the football on the first drive of the game. That's what was stunning <laughs> to me about the Niners was how we all talked about the quarterback, the quarterback, and the quarterback. But really, the pieces mm -hmm. around him did nothing in the big game. Let's not forget about the play caller either. Yeah. Once again, once again, Shanahan, you're up. Choked up a lead. You, 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 Didn't you, run it. You, you, choked, you choked up. You, you choked. You got it. got a little tight for him. This, the moment got too big once again for Kyle Shanahan. And so when he's talking about being in those situations, doing the little things right, 
hey, let's actually run the football in this situation. Um, let's not call a timeout when our defensive coordinator is in his in his own and trying to make a – he blew it once again. And so he has to take a, a deep look in the mirror and say, hey, I didn't quite maximize the talent I have on this on this roster. Obviously, the guys need to show up more, but he definitely was another piece of that puzzle that didn't show up when they needed them the most. All right, last thing uh, that I'll ask you before I let you go back to enjoying home as K.J. Wright is here with us. How far away are the Seahawks? Made the playoffs a year ago, missed it this past year. Uh, we look inside that division. We know the Niners aren't going anywhere. The Rams are only going to be better. Uh, the Cardinals are going to continue to roll with Kyler Murray. How far is Seattle from getting back to potentially being a championship contender again? Three years. Three. So Three are, years. are they going through a rebuild now, you're saying? No, they're going to be – they're going to win nine. They're going to win eight, nine games. Okay. They're going to be competitive. But when you're talking about winning your division – we're talking about getting that first round by. When you're talking about making a deep playoff run, you got three years. They have a lot of good pieces. They do. A lot of good pieces. But get your franchise guy who's going to be your franchise quarterback. Keep adding pieces on and, and that secondary. Keep adding pieces at linebacker. Both Jordan Brooks, Bobby Wagner are free agents. So they got a lot of decisions to make. But um, find who's going to be your quarterback. Let McDonald continue to build out this roster, implement this culture. And I believe in Coach Carroll's fourth year, if I'm not mistaken, that's when he came in there. He changed everything around, made the most transactions in NFL history, like over 100. He built the team that he wanted to build. And um, in, in three or four years, Coach Carroll got his Super Bowl. So I'm saying they're going to strike gold once again with McDonald.